This is a short video on how to use PowerPoint with several of the different kinds of objects that we use in PowerPoint. I've already opened PowerPoint, so the first thing I'm going to do is apply a theme on using the design ribbon. And I'm going to use the solstice theme. These are alphabetical, so you just have to kind of scroll and look for the name, and there it is. And it has now been applied to all slides that I'll enter. And this is a title slide by default, the first slide that you always get. So I'm going to type in the text just as it says to do. These are all placeholders. So you just pretty much do what it says. Click and type. And then click to type the subtitle. Whoops. And as I add the slides, I can just go to the Home ribbon. And if you click the New Slide button, you're going to get the same layout as the slide that you're currently on. And this is a title and slide, and I want a title and content. So I'm going to change the layout by selecting from the drop-down and put a title here. This is going to be a bullet list. And again, I'm just clicking and typing as it says to. I actually can do that over here in the outline pane if I want to, but I prefer to work here in the main slide window. So I'm simply typing in the text. And when I hit the Enter key at the end of the first bullet, it'll generate another bullet at the same level. You can actually use your Tab key or shift tab to indent and outdent the bullets or there are some buttons up here on the ribbon that do the same thing. It is full screen editing and the E here should be a lowercase so I'm going to select it with the mouse and change it. So I'm finished with this one. Now I want to add a blank slide. So I'm going to go to New Slide and choose Blank. And on this one, I'm actually going to insert a picture. So I'm going to the Insert ribbon. Here's Picture. And when I click the dialog, of course, it puts me into my pictures in my documents. But the picture that I want is actually on a different drive. So I'm down here looking for the correct directory. And there it is. So I've inserted the picture, in I, I, and I also want a text box on this particular one. So I've got my picture toolbar up here. I could do a lot of changing here, but I'm going to just choose a different style. I'm going to choose this one to apply it, and I'm going to move it up and over with dra drag and drop just slightly. Then I'm going to insert a text box. So here's the text box tool on the insert ribbon. And I'm going to draw it. I don't know how big I actually need to make it, but I'll just drag and draw, drop, and then size it when I'm through with the text. And this is Mallorca, Spain. And I did a pretty good job of getting that in there. So now I'm going to do another slide. This one's blank, so I want another new slide, but this time title and content again. And on this one, I'm going to create a chart. So my default data here is on, or my title, online survey results. And then down in the content area, rather than clicking to add text, I have the icons for several different types of objects that I can insert in PowerPoint. And I'm going to choose Chart. When you click this, it puts you on the first screen of the Excel Chart Wizard. And I want the default here, the clustered column. When I click OK, it's going to split my screen and move PowerPoint out to the left, and Excel will open on the right. And it takes a second for it to reposition that. Um, and because I've got the area selected for recording, <coughs> it's not quite working the same way, but I'm going to move over here so that you can at least sort of see what's going on. And I'm not actually going to change anything in here except the category names and the actual series names because in this particular one, um, for time limitations, 
I'm going to just leave the numbers as they are. But you always get this default spreadsheet with data in it. And as I change things here in Excel, although you can't see it, it's actually changing it on the chart in PowerPoint. And I want Series 1 to be two years past. And then when I tab over, Series 2 is last year. And Series 3 is this year. I don't need Category 4. And you may have noticed that down here it says to resize that I should drag this. So I am going to resize this, deleting one line. Now I can leave that there. It's fine. And when I close Excel, I'm back in PowerPoint, and there is my chart. To get back to the chart data, you click on Edit Data here on the Design Ribbon. Notice, too, that there is a Layout tab, and these are all the same as Excel, and also a Format tab. So I've got a lot of tools for using my chart. I'm going to put one more slide into this slideshow, and it's the same type, Title and Content. So this time on the Home Ribbon, I can just click New Slide. And the title for this one is Adventure Series. And then I'm going to add a table to this one. So here's my Insert Table in the Content Area. And it's going to give me the Table dialog box asking me the size of my chart. So I want it to be actually 3. And I can use the spinner or I can actually uh, type the value in. So I need a table that's 3 by 3. But you can always come back and insert rows or columns later. And then up here, I'm going to start with the text. This is self-guided tour family and cruise. Then my tours. Malorca bike tour. Black Sea Cottage and Adriatic Sea Cruise. And I could actually enter these down the column or across the row as I'm doing. I'm used to using the tab key, so I'm moving across the columns. Black Forest. Italian Alps, I can't spell. You do have spell checker. It's on the review tab, just as it is in the other applications. Or if you get something that's underlined in red, then you could just right click and see if the word is there. And notice word wrap is taking care of the spacing for me. Uh, now, the one thing that I want to do, I've got a couple of small changes to make, but here I have a design tab as well as a layout tab. Um, I want to actually center the column headings, this part in the blue. So I'm selecting, and it's hard to see that, but I, I did drag the mouse across there. And I want those to be centered, so I'm going to choose the centering icon here on the ribbon. Then I want to distribute my rows so that my rows are all approximately the same height. So I'm just going to click the Distribute Rows button. I need to select the table first, though. There we go. So that it puts it on the slide in a, and sizes those rows so that they're about equal. The other thing I want to do is to center everything. And I can either select all the text with the mouse, or in PowerPoint, a lot of times, the easier way is to select the placeholder. So I've clicked right there on that blue edge. And I want to center uh, vertically as well. Then I want to apply a transition. So I'm going to the Animations ribbon. And I'm going to set the transition to Wheel Four Spokes. That's down here in the Wipes. And there's Four Spokes. That applies it to the current slide. So I've got to remember to click to Apply All. And then on Slide 2, I'm going to animate the bullet list. So I'm going to click on Slide 2 and select the bullet list and click again on the edge to turn that to a solid line. And up here where it says Animate, I want to choose Fade by First Level Paragraphs. And I can even watch it with the preview. So I see my transition and then my bullets fading onto the screen. 
I need to save this. I'm going to save it as European Tour, but I need to get to the right directory to do that. And this is where I'm going to save it. And I'm going to overwrite the current one. And that's it.